legitimate businessman developing a line of delicious jams and jellies. Hello, everybody. I'm just so happy to be here. Um, this was the longest break I've ever had to take. I hope to never have to do that again, um, unless it's planned. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, one thing after another, and my daughter let you know what was going on, and I apologize most profusely. Gonna be one of those days. <laughs> I don't edit you guys, so I apologize for that. Um, my tablet just stopped, just just like that. So, okay. Um, in front of you, <clears throat> before I had got sick and all everything happened, I had planned on, somebody had sent me four pages totaling 160 lies of these guys, and I planned to do uh, two pages of video with just like 10 pictures, because I'm not going through all of them, that would take forever. But, you know, just to kind of, you know, do something different. Well, lots of stuff's happened. I didn't expect to be gone this long. So I decided I'm just going to do one page of video, and then I'm going to get into everything else. And because I've had a little bit of time, um, I haven't been on my, I haven't even looked at my channel. I'm so sorry. I just, I get, I got sad doing it. So I didn't, but I did see what was going on and I come apart, like, I come away with some other different, interesting things that nobody has said. So you know me. <laughs> and I've got some new, uh, baby bump pictures and yeah, just all kinds of fun stuff. So I hope I make it up to you in this video. I'm sorry if I am long winded right now. I'm not usually that way. But anyways, we will go forward. Oh, I also wanted to say somebody said once they'd never seen any pictures of these two smoking. Well, down below you can see pictures of them smoking. So there's that. <laughs> Also, um, <clears throat> anybody I use in my commercials are always in the description of my video, you guys. Please follow them. They're always fantastic. I love to find new parodies or funnies or anything like that because I do all my stuff in chapter form and anyone brand new. And at the end, I have commercials, I call them, and they're things we can laugh at. So, yeah, <laughs> let's just do that. Okay, so this is going to have three chapters, you guys, because I've been gone a while. So it'll be one of my just under an hour ones. At least that's what I'm hoping. Okay, page one, 40 lies. And then I also in here am including the truth about no Harry and how he really feels about South Africa. Actions speak louder than words. Okay, so here's the 40 lies that we are just going to do in this video. Don't worry, you guys. I will read them out. Now, what I also did was, like I said, I put, uh, I think this one has 11 pictures because if I put something for every lie, we'd be here forever. <laughs> so anyway, um, the first one I actually do have a picture with, and it said, M.M. hadn't Googled Harry or knew who he was. All right, well, let's check it out. I chose this picture because it's not something we see all the time. And it just shows that um, she was definitely online with him, before him, all of it, right? And on the side, he's, come on, what are you doing tomorrow night? Um, you're going to have fun there. Uh, she writes, heading back to have a dinner at 8, but can do tomorrow night that work, maybe? And he says, you're on. So, it was also a lie with the blind date and stuff. Like, it was just a bunch of crap. So, let's just get to the lies. <laughs> Number two, claimed she grew up poor. Number three, paid her own tuition at Northwestern. Number four, Thomas Markle paid for the scholarship. Number five, Turned Ashley, um, Cole, oh, Ashley Cole down. Mm -hmm, right. Six, started work at age 13. Seven, could only afford to eat at Sizzler's. Eight, M.M. was raised by neighbors. Nine, lied about being in the actor's union. 
And that's when I chose to put the picture. Because this she told us who she was right from the start, guys. Right from the start. But she just said, I was such a fraud. Ha ha ha, right? Because she lied about being in the actor's union. Kind of screwed her, though, because she didn't get a lot of jobs because of it. But whatever. <laughs> Number 10. Had no help with etiquette training. Number 12. Never knew how to curtsy. She then embarrassed herself and her husband and second hand embarrassment for everybody by doing this mock of a curtsy on Netflix. So, yeah. So, 13 says, didn't know anything about the royal family, but I had made something with her and him in it, so I put it upon myself to basically say, because she said that, oh, I didn't know anything about him. He had to tell me it all himself, right? So I'll show you what I made. So there they are in the same hat because I firmly believe he married his stalker. <laughs> so I just wrote, yeah, she didn't know anything about Harry. This is well before they met, right? I mean, do you, I don't believe in coincidences and I don't think it was a coincidence that she wore that thing all the time. You know what I'm saying? That that's just me number 14 witnessed the la riots that was absolute crap blind dates or, or uh sorry <laughs> where am i here okay number 15 blind date or probably not different stories about how they met that is very very true 16 wasn't helped integrate into the royal family what a crock of shite. 17. Claim the press set on the, new, on the news around the Thomas Markle drama. Okay. 18. Lied about the washing up advert saga and continues to do so. 19. Claimed she received a standing ovation at the UN. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. 20. Lies surrounding Sam Markle's her uh, name change. 21. Claims she lived with her mom during the week. What? In jail? Okay, then. Number 22. Made to feel like a bimbo on deal or no deal. Come on. And so I wanted just to put a picture of this because, like I said, I want to bring us sometimes different stuff, right? I mean, they're always the same pictures, but... Do you know what I mean? Hopefully I do that. Okay. I wrote, here's Rochel's I'm having the best time of my entire life. Fake maniacal smile. Yep. So, yeah, she's so been hard done by there. And, oh, by the, when I say, like, different stuff, I mean, like, even different stuff from myself. <laughs> so that I don't show you guys the same stuff over and over. Because I don't want to be disparaging to anybody. Okay, and you know what? I did hear a little rumor that um, apparently Howie's wife didn't like her because she would hit on Howie. Now, like I said, rumor, but would we be surprised? Uh, no. 23 inconsistencies around MM's age. And I wasn't really going to touch this one, but then I found this one thing I hadn't seen before, so I thought I'd show you. Okay, so Arabelle says, the age question is interesting. Do these children look remotely close in age? These two pictures were taken one year apart. Which, oh yeah, and this also goes to show you that she did know the royal family, because hello. But um, for some reason, age is a very hot button subject <laughs> so I wasn't going to get into it but I just thought how interesting somebody put these together because wow that's uh quite incredible they're just yeah that's quite incredible but we'll continue number 24 didn't know what a walkabout was okay yeah except she did it like a pro number 25 baking her famous banana bread saga Thought I'd show a quick picture of the banana bread that caused all the issues and she was freaking out about him. And 
from what I've read countless, countless times, you guys, she didn't even make the stinking banana bread. Like, are we surprised? No, but she insisted that it be completely right. So she made other people bake them over and over and over again. Yeah, she's a real piece of work. She is. Number 26 stated on her CV she was Caucasian. Number 27, MM is evidently a supermodel. It's funny, all the ones I decided to use pictures seem to be together. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so this is Meghan Markle's CV, and she lists her language and dance skills. And according to the resume, she's fluent in Spanish and has French proficiency. But then didn't she go on a couple talk shows and say, oh, I had four years, and then I had eight years, and now I know nothing? Uh-huh. Here's the CV that will haunt her forever. She cannot get away from it. It says, here's our supermodel Megs listing herself as Caucasian. Funny that. So, yeah, supermodel and Caucasian. It's all there. This is what she wrote. So... I mean, she hasn't sued anybody because it's her real CV. Unbelievable. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, a CV is a resume. Just to put that out there. Alrighty. Number 28, Thomas Markle paid for her study program. Number 29, lied about ever working for the embassy. Number 30, forget that forgot that she had etiquette lessons in L.A. Hmm. So she had them even before the royal family. Okay. 31. Claimed to speak fluent French and Spanish. Oh, my goodness. 32. Claimed to be a vegan. <laughs> Sorry, God. I had to do <laughs> The roast chicken. I just wrote vegan, but we all know what roast chicken is to her. And uh, she claimed, but on her um, engagement interview, she said they were roasting chicken when he proposed and then claimed to be vegan. Wow. I mean, the red flags were everywhere, guys. <laughs> but yeah, just had to do that for the shits and giggles. <laughs> So, number 33, Ellen persuaded her to adopt a dog. Apparently, Ellen doesn't have a recollection of that. Uh, number 34, double degree from NW. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number 35, claimed she had no siblings. Well, there's one over there, uh, Thomas Jr. That's a sibling. We know uh, Samantha Markle, another sibling. So, what a crock. <laughs> um, I have Samantha's picture, but it's in the number two page, so that's why they're a little bit split up. Number 36, had to Google the national anthem. Uh -huh. 37, no picture of MM being chased by press. 38, Toronto police confirmed they did, in fact, protect M.M. So I knew that our police weren't happy with them, so I looked it up real quick and just got this. I'm just going to read this. There are always people who are never going to be happy. Toronto police chief hits out at Megan as he rejects claim his force failed to protect her when she started dating Harry. And it's true. Uh, she called them. They knew it was a bullshit and they still went out she used them um later on when they did their freedom flight she used them to go get mcdonald's and shit like it was bad it was bad she was so disrespectful so yeah she is full of it okay number 39 <laughs> this one's hilarious south africans rejoiced in the streets when she joined the royal family <laughs> yeah. And number 40, secret wedding three days earlier, which the bishop had to come out publicly and deny because that's a crime. But did she care? No, she doesn't give to, she doesn't care. 
So, okay, basically that is it, you guys, for the lies. I will do the second page and the second one and all that kind of stuff. If you want me to, if you like how I'm doing it, please let me know. Um, I just find it interesting. Somebody actually put together 160 of their lies, and it's quite crazy. So, okay, um, yeah, I'm just going to go forward. Okay, so I'm just going to talk real briefly about a couple things about Africa and Harry. I also had a sub to ask me um, about the little Kiki girl, and I have some info about that as well. Anyway, I put together some stuff. I worked really hard on this video, actually, guys, so I'm kind of proud. <laughs> Not that I don't on other ones, just some take more, you know. Okay, so I saw this, right, and look at what uh, MSM said. Prince Harry gives Mike Tyndall, Mike Tyndall, a gun pose, blah, blah. Really? Because then how come underneath I saw this photo? And then I wrote, if Has No Balls was really pointing it at Mike, please explain the picture below. The PR machine, MSM, is covering for him. Why would the guy below be like, you know, kind of jokingly doing it back to him because of whatever. Why wouldn't Mike be doing that? Right? They just feed us the crap. And this is all before, you know, the lovely uh, social media. And everybody bought it. And it he's the one who's the R word, guys, like completely. And he uses South Africa and he always has. It's sick. So another one I made, remember when uh, him and Rochel went to South Africa and they let them, everybody believe that was them helping this poor elephant or, yeah, I think it was an elephant, but it was another girl and another fella. But anyways, on top it says he's pretending to care about saving animals, right? And I wrote, what an effing fake hypocrite. Because below, this is the kind of hypocrisy that Prick Harry is all about. He heads a charity that's trained a paramilitary group that are R-wording, T-wording, and unaliving children and adults in Africa. While well, he says and does nothing. And then, of course, I wrote, proud of his big kill? Barf. So, like... <sighs> He just uses Africa, you guys. He always has, right from the beginning. Even this whole scentable, this, like, it'll all come out. I have so much info. But, yeah, like, w he makes me sick. He really makes me sick. So I saw these, and I just wrote, using his mother's name again. It says here from uh, the Daily Mail, which I don't always go to, but I did this time. It's just really short. Says, uh, Prick Harry honors his late mother, Princess Diana's HIV work, and says, Africa is in his soul as he jets into Miami for an intimate panel and charity polo match. After swerving live stream at $1,600 a ticket event with Mindy Kaling. So the number two or three, because somebody put this up, like, together. It was, you know what, I, if that makes any sense, they put the the headlines basically up. So, yeah. I just wrote on top, he doesn't care because he does the same shit. Uh, world exclusive, Rainforest families claim years of A-word at the hands of guards who work for conservations. Body that is a uh, prick as a director and beg him to, to intervene. His uh, Africa charity rangers are worded and beat tribes people. Okay, so here was another, at least it's getting a little bit more into the mainstream, guys. And this is as far as I'm going to go with this. Not saying I'm not going to bring it up again. No, no, no. But with what I am saying right now, right this minute. I wrote, this is his favorite charity. Such crap. He's in bed with some nefarious characters. Um, Lithium rich Congo. That's all I'm going to say. You guys can figure it out for yourself because that's all I can say, okay? And it says here, Heredy Charity in Bed with Africa Thugs. Favorite park rangers accused of brutalizing primitive jungle tribe. So, yeah, it's pretty bad, guys. It's really, 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 really bad.
but I will continue to expose it as much as I can. Okay, this also is real quick, but it's about the little girl that uh, basically started Scentable. And um, it's quite disgusting what uh, Harry's done. Uh, this was from 2009, but what I, I wrote something up in the corner. And what I wrote was, how disgusting that prick hairless deserted this poor girl who he swore to take care of. This child has been horribly abused and has lived in an unimaginarily sad life. The complete opposite of what was promised to her by this POS. He is the biggest hypocrite alive and we will not forget all the atrocities he has perpetrated against the people of South Africa, including Kiki. He has used abuse, sold out, and turned his back on South Africans while claiming to love and have a special bond with them. Recollections do not vary. Hashtag F you, Harry. That's just how your girl feels. And I'll, real quick, I'll read this. Living on 82p a day, the girl who inspired Prince Harry's charity. It was the moment that inspired Prince Harry to follow in his mother's footsteps and help Africans forgotten AIDS victims. Cradling 10-month-old Kiki in his arms, the 19-year-old prince appeared close to tears as he was told of the dreadful ordeal she had suffered. And this is all I'm going to read about this because I think it's all we need to know. And excuse my my cricket thing there. <laughs> I saved it before I ate straight dip, but whatever. Okay. The baby had been R-worded and T-worded by her stepfather, who believed a witch doctor myth that, e that SEX with a virgin, however young, would cure him of HIV. You guys, she was an infant, okay? I wrote, it was so bad this baby had to have her uterus removed because of the essay inflicted upon her by her stepfather. Sad beyond belief. Now, what's sad beyond belief is that this person is a teenager now and is living in absolute squalor with full-blown AIDS and needs help and can't get any. That's what's disgusting. Well, everything about it is, but you know what I mean. Like, I cannot even stand it. So, yeah, I'm not, I didn't, I'm not reading out a bunch of crap about that because we already know he's just a P.O.S., Another little piece that I found, just, well, not, a, it's my piece. Um, it's a picture, and I found out that, anyways, I'll just read it. Utsu was a four-year-old orphan that Prick Hairless befriended through Centiball. I ask this, if Loser H thought of this lovely young man as a true friend, why was he not invited to sit in the church? These beautiful people flew from South Africa to celebrate this spectacle of a wedding and had to stand outside. Not to mention, they were not invited to the reception that night either. To me, he used these people as a PR stunt to show what a humanitarian he is. What a serious joke. They didn't deserve to be used in this way. So yeah, that's exactly what it was, you guys. Like, I'm just like, what I want to do basically is just showcase how much he really doesn't care. This, this little boy, or he's a man now, but he was four. And they had to stand outside with everybody else. And you can tell they were dressed in their very best. And I just think he, he's just disgusting. It was more important for him to have celebrities he didn't know there. Oh my God. I just can't stand this guy. Okay, very briefly going to get into, um, like very briefly about, uh, Diddy. I just have something I wanted to show you on X and we'll get to, um, some commercials because we need them, my friends. <laughs> I will just show one, um, uh, oh, I'm losing my mind. Newspaper, uh, The Sun, it says H named in P D D S T R A F F I C case. I hate doing this like I'm a child, but you don't know why I have to. Anyway, um, so what I gotta do, I'm just gonna show you a little piece from X that I find extremely interesting, and so will you. And then after that, we are gonna have 
much needed commercials, guys. I know you can feel me. I know you can feel me. Yo, hush, take it all back. Yo, Harry, I know you can feel me. So I'd like to talk about how I met my sweet, dear, dear husband, Harry. It's really quite a funny story. I was in London promoting my TV show Suits when a mutual friend asked if I'd like to go on a blind date. Hey girl, you trying to meet the prince? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> now, before she even set us up, the very first question I thought was, is he nice? How much money he made though? <laughs> Our first date was at a place called Dean Street Townhouse. Harry enjoyed a few beers while I sipped on a martini. I can lick it, I can ride it while you slip it and slide it. I can do all the little tricks and keep the dick up inside it. We had an amazing intellectual conversation that bonded us. So I take it you've never had vanilla and chocolate. <laughs> We simply chatted for three hours that night. <laughs> and by the end of the night, we knew we had to see each other the next day. Listen, if you don't call me tomorrow, Ginger Face, I'd be really mad. I'd be really, really mad at you. Stop it. Take my number down. Stop playing around. Take my number. Yeah, that's, yeah, four, three. Yes, that's it. Don't be like those American guys. You're English. Dabber gentlemen. I'm expecting a call from you tomorrow. I better hear my phone ring and I better hear you on the other line. Hello, lol. <laughs> call me. And this concludes today's episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. And in yo. Please, Joe Rogan, guess who's got the number one podcast in the nation, in the motherfucking nation. <laughs> oh, you can edit it out. Come on. You actually should leave it in there. You should leave it in there. He called me a hussy. He called me a hussy. Joe Rogan called me a hussy. Oh, God. Why don't people come over anymore? Um, because the pandemic. Are you serious? How do you not know that? Uh, I forgot. I'm going to give you three guesses and then I want a divorce. <laughs> is it a person? That is not close. <laughs> oh, I know. It's when them black and white bears from China that do martial arts and such go nanas. <laughs> Please tell me that you didn't just guess that a pan kung fu pandas. <laughs> well, that sounds all right, isn't it? You have one more guess. In that case, I would like to use my last guess to wish for more guesses. <laughs> you know what I wish? That you would take a plastic bag and use it to play Space Helmet. <laughs> you suck. You suck. You suck. Okay, so sorry about uh, pausing on that one commercial, guys, but the P word tends to set off the... <clears throat> you know, the people, so I tried to get it out, but probably didn't. I hope I didn't ruin it too much for you. <laughs> anyway, I've got some really great ones coming up and a brand new Sam, so you'll want to stick around for those. And um, new uh, bump pictures, so yeah, that's coming up as well. In the meantime, we are going to do jams and polo, and things aren't like they seem. Now, I know what everybody's been saying out there, and I don't know, I kind of have a different twist on it. So, let's see what uh, I've found. Okay, so I'm going to start from here. Now, I had started already doing this when only two people had got the jam or whatever, but now there's five. So, I've had to make it larger, but it doesn't matter. You'll see it all still applies. So... I wrote, these are the lucky recipients of Rochel's Jam. So number three is Kelly McVie Zavin, uh, founder of Alliance of Moms, after her nine-year-old was found on a live friend and great supporter of TGW. I don't know why she is, but I feel bad for her because she's going to get hurt in the end. Number 10 is Tracy Robbins, which is the wife of Paramount CEO. And I got, there's something on everybody here that I'm going to be explaining. 
uh, 17, Delphina Blackier, which is uh, Nachos' wife, H's friend. Number 19, Mindy Kaling, uh, actress, no idea what her connection is to them, they said. And number 21, Tracy Ellis Ross, actress, no idea what her connection is as well. She's Diana Ross's daughter. Okay, so I saw this, you guys, and it kind of started me going, and then I went on my own trajectory. But anyways, this is where it began. <laughs> Call me crazy, but I think these photos were taken by, styled, and written by M.M. using Harry Les and Dorito as hand models. And then she just sent Delphina and Tracy the pics ready to post. That is why no other celeb is posting their pic. There is no jam. There are no 50 bottles or 50 friends. Not even two. There was one bottle with two labels. And then, so they wrote in Visit Jam and Visit Kids, and someone writes, bring those back up. I think you're on to something here. The font in both pictures are the same, too. What are the odds and that <clears throat> are both written in word salad? So they were writing this, guys, literally as things were changing, and they were changing it with it. But, um, like I said, you'll see it doesn't matter. Uh, I bring it all... To, to the end together okay numbering the jars was actually a bad move because you can see how much support she actually has by how many people thank her on insta it will be interesting to see the final tally so far it seems only paramount wife and delphina have posted their promo thanks eta tracy robbins was number 17 i wonder what number was delphina eta she is number 10 Numbering is also not a great idea because it shows people where they stand in the hierarchy of Meg's social climbing. Okay, I put those pictures underneath, but then I have uh, better ones coming up. But then I noticed in Delphina's post saying, I love your jam. It is a very pasty white man's hand holding the jam jar. A ginger's hand, not nacho, with a male wedding band that looks exactly like Harry's. Then I thought the hand on Tracy's photo looks more like the hands of someone Doria's age. So this was me and I wrote, Dorito has no hair. Is this possible, probable, or plausible for this pathetic pair? Yes, a lot of peas. <laughs> no, but honestly, guys, look at it. Could it be possible? So I went looking and I found Mrs. Tracy Robbins' hands and they do not look old and they're manicured and they have some serious bling on them. The other ones, not so much. So if they did do that, Ms. Tracy, they did you dirty because that hand looks 30 years older than yours. Okay, so this uh, was on the Daily Mail, and I said, MSM has to make it look like Mindy and Tracy actually posted Roach's, Rochel's Crapola Jam. Underneath, they wrote, the Duchess's A-list pals posted photos on Insta of their jam jars. Lies, and here's the reason why I know that's lies. I went looking, guys. I went full detective on this one, I'm telling you. <laughs> I did. You will see the results, and they're funny. Because I've got to make things interesting and funny, right? So, because that's just me. But, um, wait till you see what I found. This is crazy. They are such, they are lying, lying, lying. So, for, before I get into all the good stuff that I found, um, well, this is good too. I found a couple paragraphs I wanted to read out for you and I made one of my own. Underneath everything, I put a trophy that says the number one POS, and I wrote, This trophy is yours, fair and square, Rochel. The first person in the world to earn the world's biggest anything and everything bad in one be human being trophy. Because <laughs> I couldn't think. She's bad. There, there wasn't enough room to put all the words, so I just put anything and everything. Okay. As the promotion for... <clears throat> Rochel's American Riviera Orchard products begins to trickle through. Mm -hmm. Two of her very famous pals have revealed they are also the recipients of the first batch of her strawberry jam. 
Award-winning actress and comedy writer Mindy Kaling. You guys, I, that is going to be a funny one. And actress Tracy Ellis Ross. That one too. Daughter of Diana Ross have both revealed they have been gifted jars of the jam as the Duchess prepares to launch her Lifestyles brand. Okay, they've been gifted the jars. That's about it. Other recipients have re sealed, uh, revealed themselves as Megan's fellow polo wife. Oh my God, please. Delphina Blacieux, fashion designer Tracy Robbins, and the Duchess's close friend of many years, Kelly McPhee Jaz Jaffin. As MM's A-list pals join the promotion for her new lifestyle brand, it may <clears throat> give some insight into her target audience. Okay, so there in front of you are pictures that were on these ladies' Instagrams. The other two, not so much. But we will get into that, and it's funny. <laughs> So I'm going to go through them by their numbers, not by what who got them first, just by their numbers. So the first was number three, Kelly McPhee Jaffin. Um, I wrote because and I took a I put a picture there of uh, MM wearing the t the t shirt that this lady is, and I wrote this pisses me off. This lady lost her child. And Rochel has the audacity to wear a shirt saying community motherhood. Hashtag where is Archie? Hashtag where is Lily? I mean, honestly. And what makes me even angrier is that this lady had a serious tragedy. And Rochel is just like sucks the life out of everybody and she's using her. And I just, oh, it makes me sick. So all I do with these ladies is I go on there, um, do that first page just like I did. Then I go on their reels to see what's up with MM, right? So there you see she's got a picture of the bowl, holding it with lemons and whatnot. And then what I did, which is the best part, is I went to look at the comments under these particular reels. Now, this is the only comment section you guys will see where they're really nice. And the reason, of course, is because this lady lost her child. And, you know, you know how that is. So, anyway, she must be selling sweatshirts as well. Because uh, here they are. What's your, what's your sweatshirt say? Yes, you are. Heart. Love it. Hoping she'll sell it. The sweatshirt. Heart. What's your sweatshirt say? And then hard, 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 love it. And I wrote nothing on the jam. So what? Rochel gave these out so they could do her PR for her, but nobody's saying anything about the jam. <laughs> so I just did this last one. Hearts, hearts. This sweatshirt is everything. Can't wait until I can purchase mine. Hearts, hearts, hearts. And I just said they're loving the sweatshirt. <laughs> so that is hilarious to me. But, oh, yes, it gets really good. Okay, so, uh, number 10, Tracy Robbins. And I said, would one of the wealthiest women in the world actually take the time to make this? Or would it be more plausible that MM sent it to her? You see what I have circled? We are going to watch that right now. Okay, guys, I just had to turn the music down because I get a copyright, but it's, I, it's lit. This is how it's showing on my tablet, so I'm just taping it as is. And this is what, do you honestly think that this woman would have done this by herself? I don't. I think this was sent to her by MM, 100%. I mean, come on. Okay, so like I said, I'm just going to do one of their pages. Um, I She has another one too. I think this is more for like business and stuff. I don't know. But it's got a couple of them at the uh, uh, Jamaican premiere there. So, mm. but the comments. So I just wrote, these are the comments under Tracy Robbins' Insta. 
Someone said, support your local farmer's market, not a privileged celebrity that doesn't know what to do anymore to stay relevant. Someone else says, how do you go from being a senior member of the royal family to hustling sales on Insta using the title from said horrible royal family? Someone says, so few people in this world are provided with much opportunities to make a positive impact, make effective changes, highlight so many important issues, support and showcase great charities, meet with world leaders and great and talented people. And then someone gets this on a platter of gold and trades it in to be hustling jam on Instagram. <laughs> So someone else says, hard pass, eye roll, every goddamn petting zoo and gift shop sells jam. Why would I buy it marked up from this fake royal? Someone says, good one. <laughs> okay, on to the next lady. Now that was Delphina number 17, um, Nacho's wife, right? And... You guys, it's pretty, her, her comments are hysterical. I said, I don't understand this whatsoever, but the comments are funny and she still left them up. Okay, so uh, like I said, one of theirs. And like I said, I don't understand this, but she's got like a whole flipping page pretty much with this jam. I lied, there's a second one because I couldn't believe she's the only one that has this much of MM. What is this, a shrine to her or what? Like, it's very bizarre. That's why I said I don't understand this. Now her comments and you guys. <laughs> I only went under one of her reels, one. And, that, and I, I was like blown away. Someone says, not out of touch at all because this is all about MM. This lady's crazy. You can make jam really easily in your crock pot and it won't carry the $50 price tag that this one probably will. Someone said, especially if the packaging is already falling apart. Why is the cans label peeled off? Run out of glue? <laughs> Someone, this is quite funny to be honest. Someone said, number jams? Does she think jam is art? <laughs> I said, I admit I laughed. The funniest part about this whole thing is this is supposedly her friend and she's letting all of these comments stay. Then someone starts taking the piss. Is there a nutrient label for ingredients? I'm allergic to pectin. How many calories? What kind of sugar? It would be nice to talk about that for health reasons. By the way, she's married, so it's Mrs., not Ms. <laughs> Since someone says, who's going to tell them strawberries don't grow in orchards? So it's basically a knockoff Flamingo Estate. Got it. And then somebody put on a meme that said, after zero consideration, I'm happy to say hard pass. <laughs> I wrote these are hysterical. They're on this woman's Instagram, you guys. That's what's so funny about it. And she left them. This is her PR. Okay, then. <laughs> okay, so now we're on number 19. This one is the best as far as I'm concerned. So I wrote MSM claims Mindy made a post about Rachel's jam. BS. Looks like she just met her friend's husband a week ago. <laughs> oh my god. This is hysterical. This was in her feed. She writes, met my friend's husband at a work event. Seemed pretty cool. Said he wrote a book. Gotta go check it. Or gonna go check it out. What? <laughs> what? She doesn't even name the book Spare. And I wrote, A friend's husband <laughs> said he wrote a book. Oh my God, this is too funny. So she doesn't even name anybody. <laughs> she doesn't name nobody. Oh my God. So I'm going to show you the next two pictures she takes that night. Here's the other one. A Zippo to do with uh, Harry. Picture number two. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, you guys. This is something else. So I clicked on this, right? It's the only thing she's got up there of them. No jam, no nothing. 
and the comments are hysterical. Um, a good friend of mine sent me these ones over so I didn't have to look, but yeah. So I wrote, I think we can guess the reason Mindy isn't putting Rochel's dollar store jam up or isn't posting it. So someone said, oh no, this is disappointing. Someone, Mindy, Kay Kayleen, why are you friends with them? Expected better from you. Someone else said, boo, spoiler, he's a big whiner and the book is terrible. <laughs> These are all her fans, right? This is her Insta. Someone says, oh my God, unfollow. This is a joke, right? After all, you're a comedian, but he's a shameful person who wrote a book filled with rubbish. Goodbye. Someone said, barf. Someone else says, I can't believe you are friends with Ms. Markle. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Another of her fans says, oh, please walk away. Another says, oh, yeah, I think I heard about this guy. Is that Meghan Markle's husband? <laughs> Someone says, disappointing who you think is wonderful. So I think I know why she doesn't have anything. On her Insta. Can you believe this, you guys? This is absolutely hysterical. Like, you would think that Rochel would have her flying monkeys at least go put some good, you know, stuff under uh, these people that is hawking or trying to get her to hawk her crap or whatever. Just too much. Send a text to your besties that reads, just get yourselves here. Everything is on me. In the comments below, Tag who's on the text chain and where you're going. I'll tell you who I'm bringing. Rihanna, Reese Witherspoon, Ali Wong, Malala. Pretty dope group. I wanted to show that because <laughs> she made that after. So why isn't Meghan Markle in that group? Her besties. <laughs> this is hilarious. It just gets better and better. Okay. The last one, number 21, Tracy Ross, or Ellis, it's Diana Ross's daughter. So, I don't know why she sent this particular one, but look at those flowers, you guys are dead. So I wrote, could this be why Tracy didn't post the jam, ha ha. Someone writes, these flowers have given up their will to live, and I don't know if it's the muslin cloth that has sprayed, or the jar has been... A dusty and cobweb filled room but it looks dirty at the top so I'm just gonna blow this up just a little bit so is this her meticulous attention to detail <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god she sent sent that we don't know to Diana Ross's daughter. Are you joking me right now? I can't even believe she let that out. Like, she really could care less. Ugh. Okay, this is Tracy's post, or her page. And I don't see, not a nary, a nothing about MM, nothing whatsoever. Okay, so that's her PR. And, I, and I'm going, okay. Like I said, I already put out earlier, could it be Dorito and Harry? And then look, she's obsessed with lemons. Why do all these posts have lemons? Wouldn't people do their own thing? I mean, really, it's bizarre. So now I was just keep looking at it and I wrote, this is the same bowl in all of the pictures. Five wealthy women with the same old bowl? Okay, then. And then it's like, okay, what if she sent them the bowl? Why would she send everybody the same old crappy bowl? It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. Like, and why didn't those two other <laughs> ladies put up anything at all? I don't know. It's all kinds of wrong. And it just smells all kinds of bad in my opinion. <laughs> but look how wonderful she is to help out the king and all. <laughs> uh, MM's Jambu sales for the king. Royal fans rush out to buy his six ninety five strawberry preserve with range selling out within days of her launch. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Oh my God. 
That is funny stuff. What do you guys think about what I said about the jam? Like, could that be a possibility? Do you think that she would have sent stuff for them to put up and whatnot? Like, honestly, and the bowl and just all of it. It's just very, very wrong. <laughs> Okay, guys, well, I'm looking at the time, and it is very, very close to an hour, and I still have um, a chapter and a half. I've only gone through half of it. So I'm going to put out a part two. I'm not going to make you guys wait. Um, I'm going to get this uploaded as soon as it can, and a tape while I'm doing it, and then upload the next one for you, so you can watch it whenever you want. But you won't want to miss it. Um, I'm going to get into the polo part, which is... You know me, I've got my own ideas on stuff. <laughs> and uh, the last chapter is called Bumps and Blinds. So I don't think you'll want to miss that. Plus, Sam has two new ones, you guys, too. So, yeah, I'm going to watch this one with you. Uh, well, I haven't seen either one and uh, the next one as well on the other one. But, yeah, let's just have a giggle and I will see you guys in part two. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. Your team needs to win this match, so I'm presenting the winner's trophy to you. Okay? You know, comforting you as a loser. That's going to have, you know, terrible optics. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, how it's going to work is that I'm going to present you the trophy, you know, out of the four or five or eight or whatever is in the team. Okay? So when I present it to you, please don't act surprised that I picked you, because that will throw me off my stride. Understand. Yeah, hmm. I got that. And then I'm going to plant a whopping great kiss on you, you know, in a recreation of Charles and Diana. You know, so, you know, that'll get people talking. A whopping big kiss, you say? Oh, now you are talking. And then directly after the kiss, I'm going to go in for a hug, right? So make sure you're ready to receive me. Otherwise, I'll be left <laughs> stranded there in a one-armed half-hug. Your skinny arm left aloft, half tensed. No, that, that wouldn't be good. So make sure that doesn't happen. Okay? Mm. Right, but why am I still be holding the cup? I'm not asking about the cup, okay? <laughs> Can you stay on subject, Harry? Just be ready to receive the hug, right? <laughs> yeah, but won't the trophy be in the way of the hug? Harry, can't you do the simplest of things? You know, mm. receive a hug. <laughs> I mean, why am I arguing with you about this? Look, look, I haven't got time for this. Anyway, about the photos. Remember, big smiles, looking at each other lovingly, you know, a few whispered words, you know the drill. And I swear, <laughs> if any woman tries to come in and get a photo opportunity next to you, I'm pulling around next to me, okay? I'm pulling her around <laughs> next to me. Uh, do you get a little bit jealous when other women get a bit too close? Come on, you can say. <laughs> no. But that is probably what the media will think, that I get nervous when women get too close to you. Yeah, I suppose there's no truth to that at all, Megan. <laughs> but it has nothing to do with that, okay? <laughs> I'm in the center, front and center. I'm a duchess, okay? <laughs> I'm in the middle. I'm not going to be abandoned on the outside or pushed to the periphery. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think it's like that, though, Megan. You know, I mean, after all, it would be us that's actually won the game. And maybe some people will just want to get, you know... A photograph for the prince, you know, a real prince. Oh, yeah, yeah, what they want. Yeah, right, sure, what they want. Oh, no, but there's one problem with that, isn't there? I don't care what they want. And I, I swear, Harry, if anyone tries it, they are not going to get away with it. Yeah, but Megan, aren't you concerned it might make you look rude and controlling and classless? Like, if I'd been concerned about that in my life, where would I be? You know? I'll tell you where I'd be, I'd still be on deal or no deal. No, no, I wouldn't even be on deal or no deal. I'd still be talking to my dad. That's where I'd be. <laughs> yeah, dads. I mean, who needs them? His dad always tried to stop me playing polo. Oh, no, he got me into it. Buck up your ideas, win this polo match, and stop making me have to explain <laughs> myself. Oh, my God, I love her. I'm pretty sure she doesn't hate me either. <laughs> yeah.